Okay, we're almost done with configuring CRM to connect to the database. Uh, the last thing that we need to do is tell CRM, or you know, rather have CRM discover what our database looks like. What are the tables that we have? What are the data types for each column in the table? And uh, then create a, you know, create the files that it needs uh, so that we can later on use CRM to well, manipulate all of the data. We're going to continue working with the CRM CLI for this. Now, because we already have the dot uh, env file uh, with this database URL, we don't well, like we're already good with uh, actually connecting it. So let's go ahead and run uh, CRM CLI dash H. Now I'm in the root of the project right now. So if we add a dash H that provides help. Now uh, the dash H also provides help for any sub commands that we want to do. So if I want CRM, we want to generate, then that will also provide the help for me here. Now, if you're in a position where you're creating or manipulating or working with CRM and you're in a public space, so somebody else might be looking at your computer screen, like for example, let's say you're creating videos on YouTube or live streaming on Twitch. If you go one level further and you do entity-h, Notice here under dash U where it's showing, hey, you can provide your own database URI with a connection string. Uh, that actually just prints out the connection string that you have in the dot env file. So just a heads up, it may not you know, bother you and it may not cause a problem, but it also could potentially, uh, if you're working with a real database that's you know, out in a cloud somewhere, that could expose the username and password and location for that. So just a heads up. Now, we don't actually care about overwriting this because we already have this in our uh, .env file. So instead, all we're interested in is the dash O option, which allows us to, uh, which allows us to control exactly where these generated files are going to go. Now, we need to access them from our source code which means they need to be inside of source. Now, I don't wanna just put them inside of source on their own. I wanna put them inside of a directory in source. So we're gonna do entity-o, and I want uh, src slash, I like to just do something called database like this. So if I do that, uh, it detected that we have two tables, users and tasks, excellent. It also is detecting the column types and set those up. Now, if you have something that is nullable, like for example, our deleted at for soft deleting uh, users, um, it becomes an option. Also notice that the, uh, the time here is uh, date time with time zone. So that's, uh, it also figures out that appropriately. Now, if we go take a look at what we generated here, so under source database, uh, we have a mod. Now it did mark each of these files with auto-generated by CRM. If you make a change to this file manually and then you rerun the commands to regenerate something, like uh, for example, you change a data type, you add a column, uh, you add you know something with your database, uh, all of those changes will be destroyed when you rerun the generate command again. So it's best practice to not sort of manually manipulate these files. Um, we have a prelude in here, which really just pulls in uh, these task entity as tasks, user entity as users, that's fine. And then we have tasks and users. So that brings us a model with the table name, and sets up what those what all the data types on these models are. So we're going to be able to use this to manipulate, so like get and set things on our database. And we don't have to worry very much about all of the stuff happening in here. Uh, all of our code is going to be much simpler because of this in the routes or in any other sort of file structure that we want around our own code. Anyways, uh, this has been everything we need to set up 
um, CRM and get us going. We will be using this in future videos uh, when we need to uh, connect to a database. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then. Bye.